Do we have to carry the flag with our stuff? I mean, I can carry the flag. Yes, I'll carry the flag and uh, carry the torch. Um, I honestly, and I've told them this, I've been very honest about it, I'm honestly very shocked <laughs> that I'm still here. Um, my, my goal was to make it, my personal goal was to not be first and to make it to the jury. And then I was fine with whatever happened next. And so just winning one was like, oh my God, that's so cool, like, yay. And then the second one I was like, okay, like, wow, that's crazy. And the third one I was like, this is not real. Um, cause I, I truly was behind in that challenge. That was, those bean bags. I really didn't think I was getting out of there. Um, and then that puzzle, my brain is so n not working as you can tell by my words. Um, and what about, I, what about the, um, the maze? The maze. Cause that was one that was the most recent one. Yeah. Um, the, the puzzle, I wasn't too worried about cause it's just a pretty simple like table puzzle. But this, I mean, the second Mark was done, it was like we had been in there for a minute, maybe, and he was gone. And so then I started panicking a little bit, like, oh my God, like, and my pieces and my hands are shaking, I can't get the pieces to stick. And then being out, just running around with the carabiners, trying to find this finish sign that I thought would be finish sign and it was obviously more discreet and very well hidden so that you couldn't like see it until you got there um and I definitely hit several dead ends um but because Mark had such a lead I was really I was like we gotta hustle and you want to get there before anyone else joins the maze and the second I could sort of see the I saw it and I could see that I had found the right path I was like there's that's not real and then I hit it and it was like it, it's just crazy and now of course I've won three in a row so yeah. if I don't win the next one I think that I'm going home um, my number one priority is to win immunity um, something that's uh, not on my resume and something that can secure my safety going forward um, I think the two girls are the top two targets of the tribe. Um, so with Ashley winning three immunities in a row, that's a, a really big resume for her, um, especially recently. So I think she had a lot of traction with the jury. So if she doesn't win immunity, I think she's in trouble. Um, if she does, Christina might be on the hot seat um, just because she's played a great social game. She's been really articulate. I think she'd be really articulate in front of a jury, um, make a compelling case for herself, uh, and she's just played an all-around great game. So um, I think that's where things are at right now, if I'm reading things. So I think that I'm going to be able to roll with uh, getting out Ashley and I think that me and um, uh, oh god I'm so freaking spent <laughs> I, I think that uh, me and Mark and uh, Christine are going to be a solid three and we're just going to stick uh, together I don't think any incentive we would have any incentive not to get her out if she's will to get out. The problem is she keeps winning challenges and then that's going to be a big problem. Um, if that happens, I think that um, me and Mark are going to be solid. He, like, I've been working the whole time with Tori, but Mark has also been, like, my second command, so we're almost like, a, like, he's a step right back in and we're, like, the duo now. So my big concern is what exactly it's going to look like with the finale like is it going to be a final three is it going to be a final two is it going to be a final four and then a fire making thing uh, so i'm just i know that i got my three and i'm in a good spot and i'll worry about the twists and turns when i come in view of the twists and turns
So right now, I think it's it's been such a game of dominance um, from one side. Um, those couple of Bennu members really pushed back there at the end and did a great job. And if Ashley makes it to final tribal, um, there's a great chance that she's going to win. I think that she has a wonderful underdog story. She kind of like clawed her way here. Um, I think she could really take it home pretty easily. So if she doesn't win immunity, then I think we'd like to see her go. Um, and then I'd love to sit, I don't know if it's a final two or a final three, but I'd love to sit at the end with Dan and Mark. Final four, walking it in. How's it feel? Crazy. Good. Feels good. Surreal. <laughs> first things first, Ashley, taking it back. Because welcome to your final immunity challenge. Because this challenge, the winner will be selecting who comes with them to the final tribal council. The other two people will participate in a fire making challenge where one of those will make the third person of the final three. Okay, for this challenge, you have 24 blocks. Let's call them dominoes. You are going to transport your dominoes this way, not this way. As many as you can, it does not matter, but they have to be held like this. And you're gonna go from hula hoop to hula hoop. Okay, 24 of these. All the way down with a few, or maybe one or two, however. Come back, grab some more, go. If you drop them along the way, just pick them up as they lie, as best you can. Situate them how you need to and pick them up. Just the, the goal is that you're transporting them by using those peg devices. And all 24 are in this spot. You then will stay with your lane and you can just by hand come over here. You must have one block in this orange section here and use as many as you need or as little as you need, not all 24 or maybe you need all 24, to reach this last domino. Once your domino has been knocked off, you're gonna come up here and you're gonna complete a slide puzzle. I'm gonna use this one as an example. All I'm gonna do is move one block these are all situated the same way. You can see the solution here. Guaranteeing yourself a spot in the finals, picking somebody to come with you. The other two are making fire. Survivors ready, go! Ashley off with one. Christina off with three or four. Mark off with quite a few. Dan off with quite a few. Everybody with quite a few. Ashley with just one, but now she's stacking a few more. She wants to do this a little bit quicker. Christina with another bundle. Ashley with two or three here. Mark with, I think, five. Dan with probably five. Christina with another stack that looks to be about five. Ashley now with four, slow and steady, but she's getting it done. Mark now leading the pack with the most in his ring. Dan drops, he's gonna reset. Back at his hoop, he doesn't have to, you can do it right where it lies if you need to. Christina now with a big bundle. Christina and Mark about neck and neck with the amount they have here. Ashley now building hers, catching up to Dan, who drops another big bundle. Christina counting the last few blocks to see she can do the last amount all at once, one big load. She tries it, she's got it. Her final group, Mark with his final group. Dan with a few more left, Christina now building her dominoes. Mark giving himself a few dominoes to work with before he starts stacking them. 
Is he doing more work than he has to? Well, this we'll, we'll find out. Christina now working her way down. She has a few dominoes in place. The wind is picking up. You want to make sure they're situated good. Dan now starting. Ashley working her way through. She's got just a few more to go. This game is anybody's right now. Mark now has a few to start with. He's testing out the distances between them to see if this is going to work. Christina just running it. She wants to get this done. She wants to get to that puzzle. Mark figuring this out, creating a system. How far can it go? Creating a measurement with his fist as a gauge. Almost as if he's an engineer. Oh, wait, we have to use all of them? Or not? You, can, you use as many or as little as you want. Christina now about halfway down her board. Mark working his way down to about halfway. Ashley checking out the end of hers, working possibly in the opposite way, but she does have to know that one has to be in the orange as well. Christina and Mark very close to each other. Mark's distancing is very evenly spaced. Christina just stacking them as best she can, thinking that this is going to work for her, hoping it's going to work for her. Mark now giving himself a supply. Ashley working backwards. Dan working backwards. Mark and Christina working forwards. Mark now using his fist as his measuring tool again. Christina is getting very, very close to completing her row. Will she have enough spacing? Will she have enough blocks? Will they stay and hit each other enough to knock the last one off? Everybody working quickly now to try to catch up. Christina adding more. She doesn't like what she sees. She wants to guarantee that, that those dominoes fall and knock that last block off. Christina now adding more. She has a very long roll from start to finish. She's just assuring her spot. Ashley now working feverishly to get this done in the sun, in the heat. This is not easy. This is a lot of back and forth, a lot of work, and then you've got to put your brain to work. Mark attempting the first run. And he does! Mark is off to the slide puzzle. Christina now trying hers. Hers is off. She's off to the slide puzzle. Ashley and Dan now placing a few more. Dan thinking, does he need one more? He doesn't like the spacing there. He's going to add another. Now he likes his spot. Is he going to add any more? He's looking, he's thinking, he's going to give it a shot. He's testing it. He chops it. They're off. Domino! He's off to the races, off to that puzzle. Ashley now working with just a few more blocks here. Does she have enough space? She's testing it out. Testing another one. Slow and steady, she pushes it off. She's off to the slide puzzle. Here we go. Everybody working very quickly now to see where they're at. Everybody working very quickly now to see where they're at. Ashley very quickly working on her bottom row. Very, very close. They come from behind at every stage on this one. Now she's here and she's got her bottom two rows basically complete. But will it be enough for her to figure this out? She is very, very close to solving this puzzle. Very, very close. Just a few more moves to make if she can get this right. She's guaranteeing herself a spot in the final. Working her way around. She has two solid rows. She's working on her middle and top row. Mark very close to getting his bottom rows complete. Dan looks like he has his center complete. Christina now working on her bottom rows, just trying to get it, looking for that winner. Christina now backtracking just a little bit. 
Mark now backtracking a little bit. Working his way back to that bottom row. He was working on the top. Dan now shifting things around, trying to get the yellow pieces in line, the red pieces in line. Ashley is still working on a center portion, trying to get this Phoenix to look right. It's still anybody's game right now. Ashley's back to her middle rows are still a little of a bit of a mess. Dan had something and now he's got nothing. Mark working his way towards something here. He had almost winner. Now he's got whipper. <laughs> Christina working on her bottom row. Sliding the whole row as one. Haven't seen anybody do that yet. Ashley now trying to figure out how can she get the tips of the Phoenix in the right spot. She was very, very close very early on. A comeback to get where she was. She had to step back a little bit. Right now she still has a pretty distinctive lead. Just based on the fact that she's got her bottom two rows very, very close. Christina has the orange row at the top. Maybe this is a strategy of hers. Ashley now trying to figure out how can she get this where she wants it. The same moves over and over again. It's tiring. I feel you. Sweat is dripping off of Mark all over his puzzle. Sweat is dripping from Dan. Ashley still trying to figure out how she can situate this so that the Phoenix wings are in the right position. She almost had it complete. Dan now has his top row wings in the right spot. His middle Phoenix looks good. He's working on now his bottom two rows. He's trying to turn this around for himself. Ashley hears that and now she's working a little bit quicker to try to figure out where she's going with things. Ashley getting very, very close now. Dan just trying to organize the bottom. Mark still has somewhat of a little ways to go. He's got winner on the bottom with just one slide away from the right spot on that. Christina still has her orange row at the top, which should be second to the bottom. She's got a long ways to go to get that back down there. A lot of moves to make. She's working on it though. She's got a system. She's sticking with it. That or it's a guessing game. They're just sliding them, hoping for the best. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Ashley, in the same spot she was before, how the heck does she get the body of the Phoenix where it needs to be to get those wings at the top? Ashley now taking a little bit of a different approach. She's kind of separated things a little bit more. Maybe she can get these pieces where she wants them. No, she's gonna shift them again. Dan working his way through. He likes his top, he just doesn't like where the bottom is here. She is getting closer and closer. So getting her wings where they need to be. Dan shoving a few more pieces around, slapping this thing around because he's mad at it. Ashley was very, very close. She had to deconstruct her two rows. I think I might be messing this up. Mark is so close. Oh, yeah. So very close. <laughs> he just needs to find a way to get his gold block to the other end. Ashley moving very quickly now as she figured something out. Christina I deconstructed. deconstructed again. Ashley had deconstructed again. Dan is back to a good spot with his Phoenix. Dan working with his nemesis again. Christina taking a look back again. She went from looking nice to checking. Mark out of nowhere, I didn't see it. 
We have a winner. Good job. Oh my God. Mark. Thank Good you. Good job. Congratulations. Putting me on my nose there. You did it. Good job. All right, Mark. You have a very important decision to make. You are picking somebody to sit alongside you at the final tribal council. The other two people will be making fire. Yeah, there was just one piece, no matter how I configured them, there was always one piece that was off. I just couldn't get it. And I was like, I don't even know. Like, I truly was like, I know of one piece and I'm close, but I really, I didn't know if that was gonna happen. And then it didn't, so. All right, so, you know, Pulse Racing Challenge, wow. Um, that slide puzzle was really challenging. Um, I realized kind of maybe three quarters through that uh, I had looked at the picture incorrectly with the one of the gold blank pieces. And so that was a big turning point where I was like, gosh, I could have really screwed this up. Never had a chance and just kept plugging away. And it worked out. Um, I'm excited to have my first individual immunity win. It's a really big deal for me. And uh, yeah, I'm going to the final tribal with no votes cast against me um, the whole season, which was pretty crazy. So hopefully I'm making a good choice here. I feel like I have a best chance against Dan. I think the girls are gonna, both of them will have a really compelling story at the final tribal. So I have, you know, I am i don't have a lot of confidence going into the final tribal, to be honest, but um, I hope the jury will give me a fair chance and hear me out. <laughs> it's nice to sit after that. I know, good grief. Man, adrenaline, wow. Oh. Congratulations. Thank you. That's oh awesome. My gosh. Oh Not my expected. gosh. I thought you had that one. There were so many comments from, oh my God. from Jason. I was like, oh my gosh, she's so close. She's like, right there. always the one piece. I'm so far away. Always the one piece. No, that's awesome. Yeah. You were just saying, I saw one more. Well, yeah. Came in clutch. So. Um, I'm going to be really straight yeah. forward with you. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's been great playing with you. Yeah. And, but I just feel like I have a better chance with Dan. No, I know. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Dan. No, I know. Um, and you girls, I mean, whichever one of you wins, it's an even Ugh. bigger resume builder, which might carry you all the way to yeah, the win. We'll see. But, yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, and I don't hope we see. Okay. Yeah. God. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> so God. good luck. No, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you so hard. much. Oh my gosh. Mm. Okay. I'm going to be real honest with you. I didn't practice anything before coming into this game, which was probably not the smartest thing to do, but you know, summer's busy. So I have like a slide puzzle game on my phone. Could have been practicing that, but I didn't. Definitely should have. Um, and like, fire, why did I not practice making fire? <laughs> like, so if I win, it's going to be great. I'm going to be super happy about it. Um, but if I can't make a fire, that's not really going to be a surprise to anyone, I think. So um, I, if I get to final, if I can get to final tribal, I've got a great shot. I've got a great shot. But I should have been practicing the things to get myself there. Um, I think sometimes I just rest in the fact that I know I'm a good talker and I can like talk my way into a win, which may or may not even happen. Like maybe I'm being cocky. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. It'll be fun though, like I really like this four. We've had a great time just hanging out. So it's fun, whatever happens, it's fun. Awesome, thank you. I've never made flint fire before. So that'll be interesting. I know the concept. It definitely helped make fire at camp, but we used a lighter, um, like big old cheaters, so yeah, I mean, this, I'm assuming that Christina has before because I know she's played similar games. So, uh, yeah, I guess if I get lucky, get a good breeze, got good breast support, uh, maybe. Yeah, I knew if I wasn't going to win this one that it was, she's done. But, yeah, I'm glad to have a chance. But, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Burn my hairs and everything. All right, that was a yeah, tough final challenge. Videos. Very impressive. Um, Mark, great job. 
it snuck up on me. I knew you were close at one point. Everybody was like a move or two away, and then all of a sudden it would be like in shambles. And all of a sudden it was back to something, and I look away for two minutes to look at Christina and Ashley, who were kind of in the same spot at one point, and Dan was struggling, and I, all of a sudden you're like, check. Had no idea you were even that close. You were, and then it, so congratulations. Big, big win. How's it feel? It feels amazing. <laughs> unexpected and amazing. Good. Really, really great. Why unexpected? Well, I, just in the course of that challenge, it, it just seemed like the others were close and I at some points felt really far away and a little bit lost, but it came together uh, pretty quickly, like you said, at the end. So. Okay. Uh, have you had an opportunity to talk with everybody and, and let them share why they think that you should pick them or you converse why you want to take someone? Yeah, we've, we've chatted individually. And everybody has yeah. uh, had their opportunity then? Mm -hmm. Okay, so obviously you have a very important decision to make. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to say to Mark? No. Good job on that win. Thank you. Good Thank you. Good one. Okay. Well, at this point, Mark, your decision is to who you want to take with you to sit alongside of you at the finals. All right. Final four. Here we are. Uh, I wish I could take all of you, but um, I can only take one, and I'm choosing the person that um, I think I have the best chance against in the final tribal council, so I wish the other two great luck, and it's been great playing, so I'm picking Dan. So, Mark's selection to sit alongside him and avoid having to make fire. Dan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Ashley, Christina, we'll see you in a little bit for making fire. Good luck, Carl. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Yeah, do you want to do a one a one? <laughs> Hi. Hello. Nice Hi. upshot. Hope the nostrils are clear. <laughs> are you excited? I'm nervous. It's definitely me, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I've never, I've never made fire. Never ever, fire. never once. I love that the two city girls. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like never once today in my life. Um, the fire we made at camp was yeah. with a lighter. Oh, you've mm -hmm. never done it? Well, you've, you've done it. I did it like a year ago. I haven't even tried in like a year. I just, I have no idea. I'm like, I know the concept. Yeah. I understand how exactly. it works, but. I know the steps. Yeah. Yeah. But I was have very sweaty hands on I'm like, and I'm nervous, I'm worried yeah. that it's going to be like... So, you may have seen this in our previous season. You may have seen a similar contraption before in other seasons, I'm not sure. All you have to do is burn the rope. If the flag doesn't tip, it doesn't tip. The objective is, is to burn that rope through. You, e you have equal amounts of wood. The wood can be split or shredded by pulling it if you need to, to make extra kindling. Inside of the kits are a multitude of little pieces of wood, some other little string, some other things to help get you going. There's also a card on there. I'll let you do with that what you want. If you want to burn it, you can. If you want to look at it, you can. Um, but when this challenge starts, it's first to get that string to burn. It is a flint and a striker with other little things in that kit to help you out. Again, it's pretty simple. Build the fire up, burn the rope. I'll look for the tip of the flag, but if I see that rope start to burn, I'm going to focus on it and watch it. I'll have other people helping me out. But if you think you're ready, we're going to get to it because one of you is going to join them for the final three. Go! Not sure if you've made fire before or not, but we are gracious enough to leave the instructions with these little camping kits on how to start a fire with flint. Be careful not to touch that rod with your hair or your head. Don't tip that flag at all. Be very, very careful. I'm going to let you figure this out. Hands might be sweaty. Christina now 
trying to build a pile of uh, magnesium in there to ignite. Christina had a flame. She now has at least a system to get that flame again. She's on to something. As soon as I walk away, it happens, of course, to give them a minute. Ashley now working on a, a small pile inside of her tin. I've seen some smoke puff out of there, but I don't think it has actually ignited yet. Ashley now trying a new attempt. She's wrapped a piece of wood with that, that rope. Oh, she flicked it out of the way just as it's about to possibly ignite. Christina now striking hers as fast as she can. A little bit of urgency now, trying to get a fire going. Letting your ladies work. Christina now has some fire. She's trying to keep it going as best she can. I'm gonna let her work on it, but it looks like it has gone out yet again. Yeah. Ladies, keep working. Keep trying. You're getting close. <laughs> Yeah. Little baby flames. Christina had a little bit of a flame. She does now have a flame that's trying to go. She's TP'd it up. She's trying to get some of those top pieces to go. This is the longest her flame has stayed, but she's gonna need to get some more wood ready before it goes out. She now has a flame. A, the fire is building. She has something to work with now. Can she keep it going? Can she build enough it up enough to burn that rope? Shredding more small pieces to keep it going, feeding it. Now it's just a matter of building it up tall enough without it burning down the entire structure. Can she do it? She's not sure. She has a very, very good fire going right now. Very, very good fire going. She's gonna keep feeding it some small pieces. She needs to keep building a structure to build it higher, to build that fire and flame higher. Otherwise, it will not reach any higher than it is right now. She's now working to build some sort of teepee structure Ashley now has some smoke, maybe a little flame in there, a little itty bitty flame again, no. Christina now working with a very good fire. She's creating some sort of structure now that is definitely burning very good. It's just a matter of getting that rope to catch on fire. She's switching sides, switching angles, whatever she has to do to keep this thing going, she's blowing on it. The wind will be a factor here. If you need to adjust your devices, you can. Just do not move the flags. Build your piles the way you need to. Do what you have to do to get this flame to burn this rope. Now this flame is blowing way outside of the rope area. The wind, coming. The wind is coming from your back. She's now taking her top off. <laughs> trying to shield the wind and it is working for it. She has shielded the wind. It is now starting to burn a rope a little bit, little bits at a time. She's trying to build a pile closer to this side of the string to hopefully it'll start burning it. She has a really good fire going right now without burning herself. Do not burn yourself. It is going to get hot. You have a very good flame going. It is burning this rope little bits at a time. Don't burn yourself. Don't inhale the smoke. It is now burning your rope, little bits here and there. It is starting to burn this rope more and more and more. It is now centered up. She has blocked enough wind. 
that flame is working up towards that rope. That rope is definitely burning. It is burning more and more. Very, very close to going. It wants to. Is there enough wood? Is there enough of a less of a breeze to keep it going? She's gonna add a few more pieces. This fire is roaring. She's blocking the wind as best she can. Ashley now getting covered in smoke. We apologize. Everything is burning at this point. Come on. <laughs> she just can't get the rope to burn. It's going every which way. We are on to something now. Gone. This rope is going to go very, very soon. The rope is on fire. The rope is going to drop any minute now. We're going to call this one in five, four, three, two, one. No, I thought it would go. Oh my God. There it goes. <laughs> Honestly, shocked I made it this far. Uh, I my goal for myself was to not go first and to make it to the jury, and I made it to the jury. I mean, I'm final four, you know, like <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, and I have had so much fun. Everyone is so nice, and the final three are like I love them all. They're very sweet. They're very good people, and I had a lot of fun with them. So I'm very excited for them. Um, that was crazy. I've never made fire. I don't know if that was obvious. Uh, but yeah, I've never made fire with flint, so that was, that was rough. But I knew if I didn't win that immunity challenge that it was, it was the end. I had a, I had a big target on my back at this point. So, yeah, I just had so much fun. And I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so hungry. But, uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with how far I got and... I'm really excited to see who wins. Let's bring in our three. All right, what a spot to be, right? So we'll go through this really quick. Uh, we'll each give you a chance to plead your case to the jury. And the jury will give you guys uh, one question or comment or conversation point that you can bring up to the members up here if you'd like. But we're not going to sit here and, and do multiple questions from each person. If you have something you'd like to say that you want an answer to, you can do that. Whatever is uh, you know best versed for you. I came into this game really wanting to you know go vote by vote, but always having a group of people that I could rely on and thinking ahead to the next vote. Always thinking ahead, is it, do I have a group for the next vote? Um, and so that was a little bit of my mentality, but I also really wanted to get to know each of you a little bit and play a social game that wasn't too strong, but strong enough that I felt like I had relationships with everyone. I didn't have any votes cast against me, so um, I feel like I played in the middle um, as much as I needed to and as best as I could. Uh, and But also being aware of the vote, helping to facilitate some of the votes uh, to make sure that, that they worked out. So again, thanks everybody. This has been great. I've done uh, LRGs like this, short ones, um, wait for a day. Uh, since 2010. And I've done, uh, when I do them, it's just often a lot of players are not um, super survivor fans. So this was like an all-star season for me. And the fact that I got so far with people that are so savvy at the game just is all I could ask for. When I came into the game, I wanted to make sure that I had an alliance right away. I built up my alliance and I just relied on my social game to make sure that I had people working with me and giving me information so I always knew where the votes were. I aligned with Tori right away and I aligned with um, 
mark right away, and I knew that these were perfect, especially when Tori started winning, ch winning challenges and he became such a beast. He was a perfect shield. And then Justin was also a shield for me as part of my alliance. So all these people would always be targeted before me. But the main thing that I, I think I was strong at was my social game. Just being fun, not being cutthroat, having people ahead of me in the a line uh, that would always be going before me, but still getting all the information that I needed to make moves that I needed to make. Um, my heart is still pounding. I'm still shaking <laughs> like a leaf. A um, lot of adrenaline for that last one. Um, so coming into this, um, I did have the strategy of number one, make sure I have options. Number two, make sure I'm possible. And I started that very quickly as soon as I got here. I'm sure we all did. Um, many of us recognized each other, some, some faces when we got here. Sometimes that's helpful, sometimes that's hurtful. So I had to kind of feel it out and see, of course, everybody was pretending like they didn't know each other. Um, so the people that I did know, uh, fortunately, I was on a trip with Justin, we know each other. Um, so didn't want to push anything too quick. Uh, so when we had a moment alone, I just looked at him, I said, are we good? And he leaped at me. So that's option number one. And later on, Justin said, hey, I think, I think Mark's going to be good with us. How do you feel about that? I said, yeah, let's do that. that that's great, because I got good vibes already. The sleeping arrangement in our cabin, um, I said, hey, why don't we do girls up top, boys on the bottom? You know, in Survivor, they always say, um, pay attention to who you sleep around. And so I felt like, okay, well, let me sleep around some different people so I can make some other alliances. Um, so so that's, that's what we did. We made a really good bond. Um, and as a lot of you know, I had a really hard time on the second night. And part of that was because of the strength of the bonds that we made. Um, and this, how I feel that those will surpass the game and also I would like to go into it a little bit more later. I don't want to just spill everything right this second, but there were some other factors that went into that that I would love to kind of explain myself if you guys would allow. Um, so yeah, look forward to hearing your questions. And thanks for listening. Good stuff. Um, you want to start it off? I'll kick it off. All right, kick it uh, off. The question I had in my head um, kind of just went right into how you opened up, Christina. You said you wanted to play uh, you know, have options and be flexible. And for a lot of this game, I felt like the opposite of that from you. I felt you were rigid and unflexible. Um, and you can see a reason why is because maybe you had a strong alliance and didn't need me. But on the other hand, Mark, who maybe didn't need me either, was very, some would say, open and flexible. Some call it wish wishy-washy because sometimes you were with them, sometimes you weren't, and a lot of us had no clue where your head was actually at. And that can be frustrating. So I'm trying to figure out which conversation tactics do I appreciate more? The person who's just gonna be like, fall on deaf ears, my dead end, or the person that gives me some hope and potential. Sure, yeah, thanks, thanks for that. I think that's a really important perspective because you're right, it's like, where is, when is flexible too flexible? And maybe my perception of flexible wasn't the same as yours. Um, and looking back at it, maybe options and flexibility um, might not be quite the same thing. I don't know that they are. But um, I, I do think that I had to be a little careful because a lot of people did see me in a trio with Sarah and Ayla. So I had to be careful with that. Um, so if I jumped ship, from my tribe, which, as we know, this was a game of dominance, so it was tricky. Um, we, you know, we were very fortunate to be on a tribe that won a lot, and that was a lot of fun. I know that was really tough for you guys, um, but it did put us in a position that, you know, there were one or two votes here or there that we could have pulled you in. Um, but my intention is to look to the end of the game, not to look at the very next move. And for me, I had to be careful that I wouldn't get taken out just like my other two people that I was perceived to be in a trio with. Um, so I think if I would have worked more closely with you, I would have looked weaker to the rest of my team, and they would have taken me out. So that was, that's my explanation for that. Okay, uh, congratulations guys on making it. Uh, happy for all three of you. Anyway, um, in terms of the three portions of the game, when we look at outplay, you each want an immunity. Um, 
so I'm kind of leaving that out. And then socially, I feel like all three of you are pretty similar with maybe Mark being a little bit stronger in that aspect. Um, like Christina, you were kind of like really strong at it sometimes and then other times just like you would make it clear that you didn't, like based on who you wanted to work with, you would kind of make it, your body language is very clear that like that was not somebody you wanted to talk to right now. Um, so I think you guys are kind of really even in my head right now. Um, so s strategically is where I'm curious. And Dan, I do want to give you the chance as well to explain to me a, a strong strategic move that you made. Um, because that's, for me, where I'm having trouble differentiating, is which of you three deserves to win, because I don't think that any of the other elements you really outshine each other in. You all played strong games. So I would like to hear um, either a move or just your strategy for the game and why it was stronger than the other two. The strategy that I used, everybody thought that, and I was, me and Tori got along right away from the beginning, and we were seen as a duo. And I loved that. I, it, I think it was amazing because no matter what, he was always going to get ahead. But the other thing that people didn't realize was that I had another one also. Me and him were also so close. And when Tori went down, then I had Mark to back me up. And we were close, but I, and people saw it, but I don't think people saw just how close that we were and how much we were really working to, together. I would tend to disagree with that. I think it was quite obvious that you guys were working together closely, but that's still a good move to yeah. work with. You don't have those two pairs. Great. Want to go? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, after your emotional discussion here, I feel bad bringing it back. But, you know, I do see your consideration of dropping out of the game as a huge turning point, uh, frankly, an earthquake. Mm -hmm. and. Threats to drop out of the game, to me, feel a little external to the game. It's kind of like an outside influence. Um, you know, it's kind of like insane storms that are challenge stopping or something like that. Like, it feels completely outside of the game. And, but like I said, you know, you considering that, making that an option, I think caused an earthquake in the game. Um, I think you destroyed games. I think you elevated some games. It was a really neat move. Um, and I just want to know from all three of you, how did this Earthshaker move change your game at all? How did you make moves upon learning new information? And tell me how, after this, you know, hopefully, you know, shocking revelation that she might drop out, how did that change your move, change your plan to get to the end? Um, sure, but it, honestly, like, it didn't change it at all. Like, I just, either she was, I, I play round to round. Like, either she was going to be there, and I would have her with me or have to maneuver um, around having her or she wouldn't be there. Um, either way, I felt like I had the numbers and the protection and the influence to, to be safe. It, like, it really just happened so quickly that it was not um, like an earthquake as you described. I appreciate that it was to other people, but it just wasn't something. I'm in the same boat as Dan. I, I really didn't know about it until it was actually like, really present in the whole tribe. I wasn't privy to those conversations. Um, but I just wanted to speak a little bit about emotions and how that affected strategy, if I could. Um, in, my, in my real life, like I'm a cheerleader. I'm rooting for everyone to do well. And I kind of knew I had to check that at the door here at this game and really like focus on how to move myself forward and not let emotions derail some of the strategy that I was trying to do. Okay. Yeah, and so for me, um, it certainly was an earthquake for me. Um, I think that it was the point in the game that I knew I had to like turn it up a notch um, because if I went with emotion and continued to side with you girls, I, we were going to get picked off. We were all going to get picked off, including me. And um, as I stayed in the game longer, I found that to be more and more true, and that was confirmed by people. Um, so, so that was the move that I, I felt was the strategic correct move for me at the time. Um, oh, the side of the room. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so Mark and Dan, I'm having a very difficult time differentiating both your games. You guys seem to play a very social game. You guys seem to be in lockstep. I felt like you guys always had the numbers. I felt like you guys had like the path of least resistance. 
Whereas I'm listening to Christina and she's telling me every emotion, every thought behind all of her moves and I'm just kind of hearing, well, we were together and I, I just want to hear how your games were different from each other. I, I don't know where we differ in some respects, but from my perspective, I feel like I engaged with more of the tribe and more conversations and more scenarios. I, I felt like I had openness to more people um, and was really, while I did have an alliance with Dan, I had alliances with other people too, and I was constantly like trying to make sure that I had a safety net no matter what happened. Yes, yeah, I mean, I was doing the same thing. Um, yeah, it's hard because, you know, I really didn't realize that our games were so similar until I'm sitting here next to them. I was making moves, like, we had, we were doing our own thing for sure. Like, I was making, maybe you were too, but like, I was talking to Anthony, we had, I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. With the so major. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking, we were, with, we were with making deals that, that didn't work out right. I was talking to everybody also. And for me, um... I usually play like a really like strategic, cutthroat, like cunning, deceitful game, and like I really just wanted to have fun and play like a cool, social, laid-back game. Sorry. All right. The uh, second challenge after we switched um, switch tribes, the girl swap. Christina, I want to know: Were you that bad at moving through the maze, or did you throw that challenge? So, all right, so when I was running down, and I've told people this, when I was, me and Justin were running down the trail at the same time, and earlier um, we had, as a big try on Anka, we had mentioned, like, if we get outnumbered, throw a challenge so that the other team can, you know, pip off another a member of, you know, the opposite tribe, whatever. So running down the little trail, I said, Justin, should I blow this? And he said, yeah. And then I thought about it, and I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense, because we're like, in the majority on both. Um, so no, I was really that bad. Ashley, go ahead. <laughs> um, or you don't have one? No. No. I didn't hear what you said. I know, I don't have one yet, but I don't know what's going on. Um, give me my catchphrase. Um, Even if it's a comment. <laughs> That's my comment. Thank you. Um, I don't really have a question because I feel like we've spent the last six hours just hanging out. Um, no, I'm just I'm super happy for all three of you, and I'm super excited on your you finally got your immunity win, and I think you all played really strong games. I told everyone I was worried about Christina playing a silent assassin, but um, yeah, I think I think whether or not it was apparent to us, since like some of us obviously played much more aggressive games, I think you guys still played strategy. You just played it in a different way, and I mean, obviously it works. You know, here you are. So I just want to say congratulations. Thank you. I also kind of want to reiterate what Dan said. I really had a great time with you guys. Yeah. Like, I've played other games. This one was a lot of fun. Like, yeah, I had a really low low, but I also had so much fun with you guys. Like, I don't know. I thought this was, like, a really fun cast. Yeah, cool. All right, Justin. All right, here we go. It won't be that spicy. I don't know so much tension. Um, so congratulations to all three of you, uh, Mark, Christina. This is what I wanted just with yeah, me and yeah. Dan C. Um, <laughs> So really proud of you both. Um, I think I certainly played the closest with both of you, trying to keep my options open, but certainly was pretty true to the two of you. Um, but Dan, you're the only one that didn't betray me. So uh, my vote is definitely open. Um, I've listened to what you have to say. I'm absolutely the kind of juror that's going to vote for the best player, who I think played the best game, regardless of if I know you outside the game, or if I felt like you were my number one the whole time, or you're the one that didn't betray me. Right? Like I'm going to vote for who I think was the best player. So I'm gonna keep this pretty simple. I just want you to complete this sentence. We're gonna start with Mark. I deserve to win over Dan because.
think I put myself in more conversations, more alliances, more active strategy role throughout the entire game. And I deserve to win over Christina because? I deserve to win over Christina because I came in with a pretty clear vision of what I wanted to do and stayed true to it, keeping my emotions in check, really looking out for myself first, even though sometimes I really were sincerely rooting for other people to do well, like I always kept myself first. Dan, I deserve to win over Mark because? I'm more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I deserve to win over Christina because? I'm more fun. <laughs> no, Christina. No, 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 no. Same deal. I deserve to win over Mark because? Um, gosh, that's so hard. Yeah, so I think that I deserve to win over Mark because um, it's not a bad thing to have emotions. Um, it's okay. Like, it's all right. And it, it was hard and vulnerable to have those in front of people. Still embarrassed. Um, but it was okay to have them. And I feel like I had a great balance of sociability and strategy. More so than Mark. All right, and you deserve to win over Dan because? Um, I'm more fun. <laughs> that, that, that fire, though. I just want you all to remember me ripping my shirt off for that fire. All right, thank you very much. Good luck, all three of you. Thanks thank so much. You. All right, give us just a minute to set up the voting area. You all have a very important decision to make. We'll bring you out one at a time. Make your vote. We'll come back, we'll read the votes, and we'll announce the winner. I'm still having a hard time with who I should vote. I know, unfortunately, that it's not Dan, even though he's a great guy, because he did not really... I don't know what he really did, um, besides be nice to people. It doesn't seem like he really did much um, to, to put on his resume. Then there's Mark and Christina, and I think that Christina did not have the best sense of certain aspects of the game that she thought, but I think she also was more in control strategically than Mark was, though whether that has to do with pre-game connections is hard to tell. So I think I'm going to have to vote for Christina, um, but it was a very hard decision. Should be no surprise. Uh, I've been trying to get you out for a while, and you already know, and everyone knows that I thought you were the biggest threat. Um, but I also think you played the strongest game. I witnessed you being aggressive, but also falling back when you needed to. Uh, you killed at challenges, and I think you played a great social game. You were also always honest. You voted for me, you would tell me. Um, yeah. Good game, girl. Is it bad that I'm not totally decided? <laughs> the middleman, the middleman in the majority. Congratulations, Mark. I hope you pull this out. Christina. Oh, man, it's funny. 
Next vote. Christina. Next vote. And winner. I'm Christina. I just drove seven hours, so <laughs> stoked to be here.